So I'd also like to thank the organisers of this series of seminars for including a contribution on noise. Um, first of all, I'd like to share some statistics with you which make it a bit surprising that um, people in Northern Ireland would be interested in noise. Um, there are plenty of complaints about noise which local authorities receive in Northern Ireland, but only a few of them are about traffic noise. Um, and indeed, um, if you look at the National Noise Attitudes Survey, which was carried out recently, um, then of the 26, sorry, 2,747 respondees, only 26 were from Northern Ireland, um, and so may not be particularly representative. But it's interesting that in contrasting what people thought about noise in 2000 with what they thought about it in noise in 2012, everywhere else in the UK, noise was considered more important in 2012 than it was in 2000. But in Northern Ireland, these 26 people didn't think so. Nevertheless, you're going to hear about noise. And hopefully, um, as a result of hearing what I've got to say, uh, you'll be able to suggest some environmentally friendly methods of noise reduction which can be taken into account in the planning process. Um, there's actually statistical evidence that if you have lots of green areas in an urban area, then the overall noise levels will be less. Um, this is a study carried out under the supervision of uh, Jian Kang at Sheffield University. And uh, he, he's done a Europe-wide survey, or he's had students doing a Europe-wide survey. And the noisiest place, um, not surprisingly, because it has the least green areas, is Prague. Mind you, Prague has various other things in its favour, I guess. Uh, but uh, the, the sort of uh, Dutch and Belgian cities, who tend to have much more green areas, have lower overall noise levels. Um, Jiang Kang also had a student looking at cities in the UK, and uh, basically it turned out that cities which had the least road network density uh, and the, therefore the larger distance between buildings tended to have lower overall noise levels. So the traditional method of dealing with traffic noise is to put up a barrier. You'll notice in this particular case, there's, the barrier is um, uh, next to some grassland, or at least part of the barrier is next to some grassland, and behind the barrier there are some bushes and more grassland. Um, and one of the effects of putting the barrier there is if there had been any benefit gained from the interaction of sound with that relatively soft, acoustically soft ground surface, it won't be noticeable because the barrier is there. And, and if the sound, the, to get over the barrier, the sound has to travel well away from the ground. A clue to one of the things I'm going to talk about is in regards to predicting road traffic noise. Um, Susie Cade mentioned that the environmental noise directive is requiring most of the towns and authorities in Europe to do noise mapping and where they aren't measuring they also have to do predictions. So one of the methods or a method peculiar to the UK for predicting road traffic noise is called the calculation of road traffic noise in an original way. And that includes something called the ground cover effect. Um, as I've mentioned already, you don't include the ground cover effect if you're putting up a barrier because uh, these two are mutually exclusive as far as the prediction scheme is concerned. Uh, but nevertheless, if you don't have a barrier, then there is going to be some ground cover correction. And there are various Weasley words about this ground cover correction. Um, basically, you apply it wherever the ground surface is absorbent, and that includes apparently grassland, cultivated fields, or plantations. Um, and then the other Weasel words, which means that whatever the surface is, you use the same correction. Uh, and the other Weasel words covering that point are that to avoid the difficulty 
of defining adequately the many other absorbing types of ground. The correction is to be used for all surfaces, um, but that means that calculations will slightly underestimate the attenuation effects, particularly where the ground is intensely cultivated and planted. So as a result of a project which we did, um, funded by the European Union called Hosanna, we looked at various natural ways of reducing noise, and one of them is the interaction of sound with the ground. And so we looked at data for lots of different ground surfaces. In fact, we looked at 42 different ground surfaces, and not surprisingly, each one of them gives you a different uh, ground correction. And a lot of them give you a lot more than the ground correction you would calculate for any type of absorbing ground if using the calculation of road traffic noise prediction scheme. So basically, I suppose if you're going to have grassland next to motorways or highways, you want it to look pristine and cultivated and nicely mowed and so on. But that's the worst thing you could do, really, if you want it to be good for absorbing sound. What you want is it, you, want to, you want it to be wild, leave it un uncultivated. In, in fact, if anything, plough it up rather than mow it, right? And that makes the surface much more porous and allows the sound to enter and therefore get uh, attenuated during its interaction with the ground. Um, and th this shows you some predictions based on the measurements we did on lots of different types of ground of how much variation you could get just from different types of grassland. So, for example, um, if you had the compacted grass, then you'll get the middle curve in terms of decrease of road traffic noise. Um, this is the spectrum of the decrease. Uh, whereas if you have the meadow, you can get even more decrease across the spectrum. And in fact, in terms of numbers, um, then at 50 metres away from the road, assuming that your grassland starts two and a half metres away from the nearest traffic lane, um, you can get, from your compacted grass, you can get five and a half dB reduction, which compares to the four dB you would calculate for the same geometry using the calculation of road traffic noise. But if you choose your grassland carefully, the uncultivated meadow is giving you another 2 dB even at 50 metres. And it's giving you nearly 5 dB more at 100 metres. So choose your grassland. That's the first message. Um, typically, people assume that trees don't do anything for noise control. If you read most of the current textbooks, that's what they say. Um, of course, there's a textbook I've written which doesn't say that, uh, so that might be one amongst the, amongst the few that, that say that trees could actually do something. Um, but as part of this Hosanna project, we did a lot of studies of sound propagation through trees, and this, this, this is showing you the result of a numerical simulation of what happens as sound travels through trees compared to what happens when it travels over open grassland, for example. Um, so... Have I got a pointer? What does that do? It doesn't do anything. Okay, so the top, from your point of view, top left is your source of sound. Then the middle one is what happens an arbitrary time later over grassland. And the lower one shows you a double time twice as long after you start the, the, the source. And the... Um, the right-hand side plots show you what happens when the same sound is trying to travel through a load of trees. Trees do lots of things. They, the, 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 the trunks and branches redirect the sound away from the path between the source and the receiver, which we call scattering. Um, and also you can get some interesting effects if they are regularly planted. You can get what's known as sonic crystal effects, which is a, a sort of hot topic at the moment. Of, what, of, of trying to affect sound using periodic arrays of things. Um, and a, a, a regularly planted tree belt is a, an irregular, as far as the trunks are concerned, it's a regular array of series of cylinders and you can get this sonic crystal effect. But also the foliage um, on the trees uh, can also reduce the sound. Unfortunately, most prediction schemes even if they allow for trees to have any effect, include only the effect of foliage. 
Um, whereas, in fact, in addition to the scattering and the foliage effect, you also get the fact that beneath the trees, you have about the softest grounds you can have from the point of view of acoustics because of all the uh, decaying leaves and litter which make the, the top part of the ground incredibly porous and allow the sound to enter to quite deep, de deep depths. So you've got three things going on and three things that can help reduce the sound as it travels through trees. Um, and here is a prediction of what happens with a particular design of a tree belt. The dimensions you can see there, you've got a 16 centimeter diameter trunks, tree trunks. Uh, you've got them spaced at a meter parallel to the road and at two meters at right angles to the road. And you've got a 75 meter long belt of such trees and 25 meter deep. And this is the predicted result of doing that. There are lots of measurements around which show you this kind of attenuation too, but I'm showing you the prediction because this shows what you could achieve with a very, very carefully controlled planting. Um, whereas the measurements done are obviously on whatever planting they happen to be around when they did the measurements. <coughs> so you can get a difference in levels, um, an open area compared with an open grassland area compared with this tree belt, you get a difference of 7 dB at a distance of uh, 40 metres away from the road. So that's quite a useful amount if you've got enough land to have your tree belt. In a similar vein, hedges can have a little effect, um, and we did some measurements on what effect they could have. Uh, so here is a uh, results of some measurements we did as cars pass by um, an open area in a bit a gap in the hedge and uh, opposite the hedge itself, and so we looked at the difference between these two, and depending upon the spectrum of the vehicle that was passing, you got different kinds of reductions. But as you can see, for this very spiky spectrum of vehicle, uh, you got 2.5 dB reduction um, due to the hedge compared with no hedge. We also looked at other ways of um, exploiting what is known as the ground effect by actually creating a particular kind of ground. And so instead of the th a three meter high noise barrier, imagine you've got a series of one third of a meter, that's a foot in old money, um, uh, high walls that you've made a series of parallel walls only a third of a meter high. For various reasons, this gives you an enhanced ground effect. Um, it's because you've got multiple edge diffraction and is essentially you've changed the uh, if you put them on a hard surface, you've changed the reflection from that hard surface, so it appears as though it's from a porous surface. <coughs> um, the most effective one for traffic noise is where you make, actually make a lattice of these low walls. Um, and, if you, and that's because, as far as a vehicle travelling along the road is concerned, the sound comes in from all directions. Um, and so the, if you've just got a, a set of parallel walls, they're, they're most effective when the, the source is directly opposite the receiver, uh, not so good when the source is displaced with regard to the receiver. Whereas if you've got the lattice, then it has more or less the same effect for all directions that the sound comes in. And this shows you the kind of reductions you can get. And you can see if you've got enough space to have a 12 meter wide lattice, then you could get over 10 dB reduction, which is not to be sneezed at. 10 dB, by the way, uh, the, the, our use of the decibel scale means that that's one reason why people don't like getting into noise, but that simply means that a 10 dB reduction corresponds to a halving of loudness. So that's a very significant change in the noise level. We have looked at a couple of or three different ways of reducing the noise, mostly to do with exploiting soft ground effect and exploiting trees and hedges. And so these, I think, should be considered as an alternative to putting up three meter high noise barriers all over the place. Um, 
And although each one on its own, each method on its own, might give you less than the reduction you would get with a three meter high noise barrier, which would give you, you at least 10 dB for a large area behind the barrier, um, you can use lots of methods in conjunction. And I've talked a bit about those in the um, briefing document, um, rather than use up the time here. So you can add various different ways of doing it. Um, for example, if you've got, uh, a, well, yes, I'll, I'll go on to that. We, we looked at lots of different methods in the Hosanna project, including putting vegetation on faca facades of buildings, putting vegetation on roofs. In fact, in, in urban areas where people can have proper gardens, maybe they'd be very happy to have roof gardens instead, and they will help in terms of the noise reduction. Um, even piles of stones can act as a barrier, and we looked at some of that as well. Um, if you add vegetation to a low barrier, that is less than, a, well, to, even to a regular barrier, then, uh, for example, if you've got a barrier both sides of a road, then you can get reflections between the two barriers, which mean that the level between the, uh, 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 for vehicles on the road is higher than it would be otherwise. But if you make the... Um, the, the, the <coughs> the faces of the barriers absorbing, then that reduces that effect. And you can, one way of making them absorbing is to grow vegetation up the barrier, creepers and so on. Um, we all looked at special designs of barrier tops. We looked at various forms of sonic crystal barriers using regular arrays of cylinders. One of the interesting ideas was if you have an, a regular array of um, horizontal cylinders, which have different radius, actually a radius which increases with height, then you can get a kind of artificial refraction. The sound enters and gets moved, bent upwards by the by this cylinder array. Another thing that's interesting, I mean, quite often people have um, gr grass banks um, made from uh, perhaps using spoil removed when the road was being constructed. So they have earth banks uh, or berms. Um, and one of the things we discovered is if you actually corrugate, if you make the edges of these berms corrugated, then they will function better from the point of view of noise control. That's something that's not generally known either. So all of these methods are not widely known or accepted. It's hard to be evidence-based when a lot of the methods you're talking about are not yet been tried. They've been tried in the laboratory, they've been tried in pass-by pass experiments. Um, but not many people are using them when they're planning new roads or new developments. Uh, so only in a few years' time will it be realised how effective they can be as an alternative to the classical road barrier. Thank you very much.